Thank you very much, King. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to extend to all of you a warm welcome to the second annual meeting of the Consortium of Universities for Global Health. This promises to be a highly successful meeting, and I'd like to express my appreciation and gratitude to the myriads of people who spent numerous hours organizing the meeting. First, let me thank the University of Washington, not only for hosting us, but also for providing financial assistance to the meeting. I want to thank and congratulate our hosts, Dr. King Holmes and Judy Wasserheit and their team for their remarkable achievement in putting this meeting together. I also would like to thank Chuck Smuckler and the CUGH Secretariat, Secretarial, Secretariat staff at UCSF for their work. The vision of CUGH is to make the university a transforming force in global health. This is possible because of the university's incredible interdisciplinary resources in brain power, the energy, enthusiasm, and commitment of its faculty and students, and the unmatched potential universities have to contribute to global health in research, education, and training. This vision can only be achieved, however, if all the stakeholders who promote and implement the various university activities around the globe work together in collaborative partnerships. I am delighted to welcome to our meeting many of these stakeholders. Twelve organizations have, been, have sent representatives to this meeting. The slide you see represents the logos of these uh, uh, organizations. This afternoon, we had a joint meeting to plan how we can begin to collaborate and support each other. I am gratified and very much encouraged by the deliberations at that meeting. In 2004, Jerry Kirsch held a meeting at Boston University to which in, he invited universities which at that time had established global health centers. The idea for a consortium was conceived at Jerry's meeting. The idea languished, however, because of lack of funds and sponsorship until September 2007, when Jaime Sepulveda held a meeting of global health experts in San Francisco. The consortium concept was revived then and subsequently through the support and leadership of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the consortium was founded. The Rockefeller Foundation also supported the consortium through its first year of organization. In 2008, an inaugural meeting of the consortium was held in San Francisco with 20 universities attending. Following that, in September 2009, CUGH held its first annual meeting at the NIH. By all accounts, that meeting was very successful. Some 58 universities from both resource-rich and resource-poor countries attended. The meeting was opened by Dr. Francis Collins, the, the then NIH director, 
keynote addresses were given by Dr. Zik Emanuel, Senior White House Advisor for Health, Eric Gusby, Ambassador at Large and Director of PEPFA, as well as by Dr. Harvey Feinberg, the President of the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. The meeting this year promises to be even more successful. We have some of the leading leaders in global health as speakers in our plenary sessions and panels. I have listed on this slide the founding board members of CUGH. They have worked tirelessly to get the consortium to this point and I'm grateful to all of them for their commitment and hard work. I would now like to give you a, a brief update on CUGH. But before I do that, I thought you might be interested to see just how rapid and explosive the development of university-based global health programs has been in North America. Last year, based on 37 responses to a survey of 50 universities, we knew we knew had well-developed global health programs. We showed this finding represented on this graph. 29 of the 37 responding programs were established only within the preceding five years. But at that time, we had no idea what the total number of all types of university-based North American programs of global health were. We now have that information. In a web based survey, we found that 268 universities have some global health program. Of these, 77 are described as global health centers. 50 universities with global health centers offer degrees, global health tracks, or concentrations. There are an additional 24 universities without global health centers that offer global health degrees, tracks, or concentrations. So you see universities are creating global health programs at an accelerating rate. In January 2010, the CUGH Secretariat sent out invitation for institutional membership to North American universities. With the responses that come in by May 1st, the number of member universities had grown from the original eight to 20. And by August 10th, the membership had risen to 52, and this afternoon, I'm told we have 60 members in CUGH. All of these are universities that met the CUGH membership criteria, which stipulate that a university must have a well-formed interdisciplinary global health program that involves more than one school, that the activities include education and training, research and service, and that the program has a well-established and functioning international partnership. We expect the membership of CUGH to increase to, increase to 125 if and when CUGH and GHEC, global health, the Global Health Education Consortium, merge in the next year or two. Another evidence of our growth is the number of people that attend our meetings. The inaugural meeting in 2008 was small, 
with an attendance of about 50 invited guests. The attendant at our, attendance at, at our first annual meeting at the NIH last year was a little shy of 300. The attendance of this meeting is about 850, and that's only because we closed the registration. As you can see, the growth of CUGH has been geometric, and I think it's chiefly because it was an answer to pent up need and energy. I want to end by telling you of two important events that happened in 2010, and by describing to you CUGH's priority agenda for 2011. In 2010, CUGH was incorporated in Washington, D.C. as non-for-profit organization. In the not too distant future, CUGH will open a, a Washington office, which will be the nerve center of its advocacy activities. Also recently, CUGH was fortunate to receive a three-year 1.5 million grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to support the consortium through its early growth until it becomes financially independent. CUGH owes an enormous debt of gratitude to the Gates Foundation, not only for this generous award, uh, but also for the inspiration and financial support that they have provided over the past three years. And that has been pivotal to the birth and rapid growth of CUGH. And now to the 2011 CUGH priority agenda. The merger discussions between CUGH and GHEC are now in an advanced stage, and we hope to complete them and create a single merged organization in 2011 or 2012. We plan to hold a joint 2011 annual meeting in Montreal in collaboration with the Canadian Society for International Health. An important preoccupation for CUGH in 2011 will be to create services that its members need and want. These services will span education, research, clinical services, and enabling, and enabling systems that will not only facilitate the work of member universities abroad, but will also create the platform for easy collaboration and sharing of material, personnel, and intellectual resources. Advocacy for global health in general and for the role of universities in particular is a major priority for CUGH, one of the first steps in CUGH's strategy for its advocacy role will be, as I mentioned, to open an office in Washington, D.C. We hope to accomplish this within the next 12 months. In closing, I'd like to welcome you all once again and to thank you for your attendance. Together, we will make this one of the most memorable global health meetings ever. Thank you very much. <laughs>